Well, good day, everybody. And today we're going to do a deep dive into the Mazda infotainment system menu. We're going to do a little bit of review on this scroll dial uh, interface, how you control this system. This is a very, very polarizing system. People love it or hate it. I think most people who own it actually learn to love it. I think if you go out on a test drive and you you can get frustrated with this, especially if you're used to touch screen. So I'm a little agnostic about touching the screen or using a scroll wheel, uh, but the, the, what I do like about this Mazda system is the screen itself. And I think that's what gets lost in this polarizing discussion about how you control it. The screen is ideally placed for your eyes. It lines up with the gauges. It's a beautiful screen, high quality. It's got a nice landscape a uh, uh, form factor to it so it's ideal for like apple carplay and you know mazda their whole theory here is you should you don't have to take your eyes off the road as much and i would say that yes it's very attractive it's elegant looking it's one of the best looking screens as far as the interior styling it's not a tack on it's actually like they thought about it before they designed the car so i really like the screen and the fact that the screen is here it's not practical to touch it so you do need this command wheel so that's it like i said i think it's not everybody's cup of tea i do think once you get used to this system you do prefer i do like it especially if you don't like fingerprints on your screen uh your ocd like me about that then this is the system for you however mazda's claim that this is safer or that you're not as distracted i don't really buy it I think it takes a little bit of discipline to use this system and if you do use that discipline where you kind of keep your head straight and you just use your eyes it, it, it is safer but i have found myself wandering around these menus a little too much anyway so let's dive into the menus and i'm going to hook up apple carplay i'm going to go over a little bit of how this wheel works down here and we're going to deep dive so uh yeah so buckle up if you've been uh on the verge of you're just not sure about how you know you're just not sure about buying a mazda uh, with this type of system then then hang in here for a little bit we're gonna we're gonna go through it so let's just start right down here with how you command this thing you have this control wheel this is your main guy uh it turns it also is a four position joystick uh, it goes back and forth up and down i don't use it as a joystick too much i just kind of use it as a rotation thing here you also have your volume knob over here, which also is a left to right joystick for skipping tracks. And the nice thing about this volume knob is it you push it down and you mute everything. The other thing I will mention right now is with your arm laying here, this is just falls all nice to hand. So again, it's ergonomically very, very good right down here. Again, the combination of screen and that is one of the reasons I like it. The other thing is is that this all this stuff is feels really good high quality so there's a little bit of satisfaction when you interact with the buttons and the knobs down here so you do get four shortcut buttons around the wheel i only use two of them and that's this return like in any menu system if you hit that return uh, it'll take you back up a level and then this home button is probably the key button especially if you're using apple carplay you get this little music note button here which will take you over to all your uh audio inputs whether you're using radio or bluetooth or some other uh some other source like a usb stick and then you get a navigation button here if you have mazda navigation uh you hit that it'll go to your mazda navigation screen if you are running carplay or android auto that'll take you to whatever navigation system you are using there so anyway that's the buttons here you do have a favorite button over here we'll get into that as we get into some of these menus so if you go up to the menu we just scroll around there's not a lot in these menus mazda uh you know there's five right here there's these main menus you also get your clock on the right there but there's just not much in them so let's just start up here with information you got entertainment communication navigation and settings so information wise there's really only one useful thing in here you or two you get your fuel efficiency monitor never use it never use it but if you're interested in your history they don't really give you a lot of it's not very configurable uh and you know if you want your fuel information you can find it out here again i'm going to hit this back button here go back 
However, under vehicle status monitor, this is where all of your alerts, you can see we have a service interval coming up uh, for this car, it's 10,000 mile service. However, if you go down here to something called maintenance details, you get something important like your tire pressure. Uh, and that's very, very important. We have a left rear wheel there that looks like it needs some attention. So that's very, very nice. And this updates pretty regularly. You don't have to drive a long time to get the tire pressure. And then the other thing down in maintenance settings is you can override the Mazda scheduled maintenance and uh, put in your own, you know, if you want to do a 5,000 mile oil change or uh, 3,000, you just put it in right there. So again, let's just keep going back and hit the button back or I could have hit the home button. Uh, well, whoops, I'll get to that in a second. Entertainment, I'm going to skip this for a second and go back to it. Communication is just where you would hook up your Bluetooth devices. We don't use that. We use Apple CarPlay exclusively. Uh, however, I have tried Bluetooth with this system and it's quick and easy. Navigation, again, you're not going to have anything here if you don't have the SD card navigation system. If you hit that, you just get your position, GPS position, and a nice compass. Sometimes that can come in handy. Uh, again, if you're running Apple CarPlay, this will bring up Google Maps or Apple Maps or whatever you're running. Okay, so let's go up to entertainment. Entertainment is kind of a deep dive menu because if you are on a radio station, it'll go right to whatever audio source you're on. You hit your scroll wheel button again. Oh, I should have mentioned that your inputs are always a push down on that button. This is where you get all of your sources, uh, whether it's USB, FM. Uh, this is where you can plug in your favorite radio stations. Again, I don't use any of the favorites at all in this system. Now they say you can use the favorites button to add menus and I have yet to figure out how to do that. So if you want to go to a menu uh, location, they say you can use favorites. I have not figured out how to do that, but I have been able to add stations. Uh, you can get in your station list right here. It auto scans and puts them all in here, including your HDs. And then if you want to tune yourself, uh, you can use uh, this button or this button to jump between your settings, uh, your set stations, which I do not have or you can just use these fast forward guys here to start scanning. You can see I'm scanning through the stations now as I hit that. Okay, so that's your stations, uh, or you can go into manual tuning. Now, if you do use the radio a lot, I could see where this is completely frustrating, uh, but once you get it all set up in your area, it's gonna be fine. Now, the weird thing here is you have to go into this first little nit about their menu systems is I have to go into this first menu this entertainment menu hit menu again and then go down and this is where I can change all of my audio settings my bass treble fader uh, my Bose settings so there is another way to get to that in settings and I'll go back to that but that's a little frustrating I'd like to have that under favorites and I'm not quite figured out how to put that under favorites it'd be nice to go to auto settings audio settings with one button button so that's one of my complaints uh let's see here so that's entertainment and then let's go down to settings we'll spend a little time in here so in vehicle displays there's not a lot you can change the center display whether the brightness is automatic uh and then you get into uh what kind of uh blank screen you want so they call it the ambient display you can either have that blank or a clock i like my clock uh, and whether you want an analog clock or a digital clock i do like the way the analog clock works okay and then uh instrument cluster display only really thing that changes there is whether you have a bar graph on the right here or just uh just a, a number so i don't know that that's we just leave it right there at the bar graph for your instantaneous fuel mileage, your average fuel mileage, and your range versus just a number. So that's it for in-vehicle displays. Sound settings. Okay, this is just what we just did. We came over there uh, through the entertainment button, but here we are on audio settings. It shows up here, the same menus, but you also get another menu here, which is all of your warning chimes and vehicle notifications. You can change the volume <clears throat> from low, high, or moderate. Not medium for some reason, it's moderate. So uh, <clears throat> interesting word choice. Safety settings. Uh, you get your driver assistance. Uh, you know, if you go into this menu, this is where you can actually turn off radar cruise control. If you just like regular 
cruise control this is where you would set that at uh, and then safety alert so this is where you're going to get your beeps for your rear cross traffic alert lane departure warning system again we have this set to just to vibrate the wheel we do not want uh, we do not want uh, audible setting for that. That'll drive you nuts. Blind spot monitoring. It will give you a little bit of a view on your dash, and then it'll also um, it'll also give you um, uh, you know the the the, the audio. The, ah, what am I saying here? It'll give you a little bit of visual on the dash, and it'll also give you a nice pleasant chime. And this is where you can change the sensitivity of the system and alert timing. Active safety. Uh, what keeps here is your lane keep assist system again this is where uh, it'll try to pull you back in the lane if you wander off and then collision avoid again I don't know why collision avoidance isn't under active safety but they got it as its own menu this is where your smart braking uh, your brake assist shows up and then again your alert timing this is set to normal uh, right there and then pedal misuse this is a kind of an odd one uh, if you are hitting the gas and the throttle at the same time, hitting the gas and the brake at the same time, uh, this pedal misuse alert will come up. So that's, and then finally get into vehicle settings. This is where you change all of your door locks. Uh, we like to keep, uh, we like to uh, have the door locks. Um, you know, wh when you turn the car on, you turn the car off, when it locks, when it doesn't lock, they're all in here. Whether you unlock all four doors or all in two doors, they show up here. And you can see that all doors right there. The one thing I would like about the locking feature is um, uh, you can set uh, when the doors lock when you're driving. So if you put it in gear to lock, uh, unlock it when you throw it back in park. We just have it to... Uh, It'll, it'll lock when you drive off, and then when the ignition goes off, it'll unlock. So that's a nice setting. However, there's some safety. You know, some people don't want their doors automatically unlocking. And then how often it relocks. So all that's right here, all your locking. Again, Mazda doesn't give you a huge amount of choices here, but this is where you would find it. Exterior lighting, this is how long the lights stay on when you come in or off, whether you use the high beam, automatic high beam control, whether your DRLs come on, and then how long the lights stay on when you get out of the car. So you'll find that under exterior lighting. Interior lighting, uh, again, it's just how long do these lights stay on, not much there. And then this is where you turn your rain sensing wipers on. Turn signals, not much here. You can just turn on your three flash or, or not. And then your volume, I would like to change that three to, to five sometimes, but it does not let you do that. Three is the only option. Whether you automatically shut off your rear window defogger or not. Uh, yes, you need to leave that to auto or it'll be on all the time. And then this is an odd one. So this is one I'm going to try out now that the weather is getting a little colder. I think when you remote start the car, if you enable this, what it does is it'll engage the seat heating uh, it, based on what your climate control settings are when you start the car. So we're going to leave that on because now that it's getting chilly, we're going to try that and see if the seat heaters will come on when we remote start the car. And then finally, if you turn off the car and start pumping gas, uh, that fuel door lock will lock uh i've set that up to two minutes because sometimes you're fussing with your phone and you don't want to get out and find your fuel door lock locked so let's see what else we got connectivity settings this is just where you tell it bluetooth wi-fi this car can be a hot spot and then finally your system settings which is where all of your all of your uh you know whether software updates language units that you like there again so keep going to get hit back that is the same. So that's it with the menus. I'm going to go ahead and hook up Apple CarPlay. The one thing I will mention with the menus is if I am in a menu and I hit the home button, I will always go back to home. If I hit the home again, I will go back to my ambient screen. So pretty, pretty nice. I like that ambient clock. Uh, I don't like a screen up there. So that's pretty nice. Now, let's go ahead and hook up CarPlay. Okay, so we have Apple CarPlay hooked up. Now, everything pretty much stays the same. Uh, you can see Apple CarPlay, so this is where I would click my uh, command wheel over and I get my CarPlay. Now, in CarPlay, I can just scroll around. Uh, I can use this as a joystick to move around. And it really, just moving around CarPlay itself, it's pretty easy. Uh, what What's gonna happen here is that your home button is going to change so my single push on my home button is just going to cycle me back between this tiled view 
and the menu selection. So that's nice. If I hold the home button down, I go back to my Mazda menus, which is really nice. And then I can hit my button again and get my clock. So I can be running Apple CarPlay, listening to music and have this nice, you know, very, you know, non-distracting, especially at night driving. I like that. So if you hit home again, you'll go back here. If I hold it down, I'll go right back in the CarPlay. Now, when you're using CarPlay, uh, I would recommend you go in and choose all of your apps that you really use a lot and put those at the top. You can see Spotify, Podcast, Google Maps. These are the five things I use a lot. They're all at the top. That makes them very handy to get into. Now, when you get into Apple CarPlay, how easy this is to use is really dependent on the app. So Spotify, I find to be a little cumbersome podcast. Sometimes I wish I could touch the screen. But all in all, it's pretty good. Again, I like the tile view here. And then you can always uh, click and go to these menus also. So pretty easy to use with the scroll button back and forth. I really don't have any issues uh, with this. And again, once you get used to it, you kind of like it. So there you go. Again, this home button is key to go back and forth between Apple CarPlay and uh, the Mazda menu systems. And again, everything works really well if you're willing to give it a chance and get to learn it. So leave a question or a comment below about this system. We'd love to answer it again. Uh, and if you haven't uh, subscribed to us or liked this video, please consider doing so. Us small YouTubers could really benefit from your support. So again, thanks for watching this information video today on this Mazda 3 infotainment and have a great day morning or evening wherever you may be